God gives His laws, the Ten Commandments, to guide people that He has created in all society, in every age, in every facets of life. And as we turn to the newspaper, we often see various situations arising from the lives of men and women living around us. A man can be involved in a situation whereby a close one was killed through a dispute that came in the home. And there are also other situations that come in a life of in society when a man abducts a child perhaps a young child taken from the home how do we see such a man stealer and we also see situations whereby perhaps someone is bitten by a dog, an animal, domesticated. Who is responsible? How far is a person responsible for the injury that is afflicted, inflicted? upon someone and we have many situations in our society whereby we need to meet out justice what is just how do you measure what is fair what is equitable we see in our law courts that a, a verdict can be appealed in a higher court and we see that there are situations whereby the higher court can overturn the original judgment. So who is right? How do we go about assessing men-to-men -man relationship? How do we go about judging such situations in our society? Our text in Exodus 12, Exodus 21, 12 to 21, gives to us a crime and also a punishment when a person did wrong how should he make right? To what extent that is to be done? And we would like to learn from God's law what is truly equitable so that we may understand and have a right frame of mind to think rightly how to assess Situations between one person and another person in our relationship one with another so that the world that we lived in may find it with it peace and harmony. We begin with speaking about the law of servanthood in the first 11 verses that delineates for us how servants are to be treated in a civil society under God 
and you realize that God cares for the weak and his heart is towards those who have no means to help themselves and as we progress in this chapter we are going to see from verse 12 onwards a series of serious crimes that takes place in society around us after the fall right? you remember before men fell Adam and Eve was in the paradise made up by God and at that place there was no violence until men fell then that evil nature came into him and how he had no power to overcome himself the evil nature that is in him and as you read the book of Genesis after chapter 3 you would be able to see the series of violations men against men in the various scenarios and situations that occurs that, that is like reading the newspaper column as you turn to it on an average day. You would notice also that there is a general movement from very serious, heavy crimes to crimes which are lesser in the sight of the seriousness that is described here. But we would like to realize that every violation of one man against another man, a man against a woman, is a sin against God and God is not pleased with this that is why he gives to us he gives us these judgments uh, this may be called case studies scenarios for us so that we may be able to apply uh, what God would want us to learn the principles by which he sees things so that we can use the same principles to help ourselves to understand the world around us and how to live equitably one with another. The most serious of all offences is capital crimes, are capital crimes, crimes that involves the taking of the life of another person and the word of God tells us in Genesis chapter 9 and verse 6 you turn there Genesis chapter 9 and verse 6 concerning the taking of the life of a man Whosoever sheddeth man's blood, Genesis 9 verse 6 says, By men shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he men. Here our text tells us the preciousness of the human life. And verse 12 of our text in Exodus 21 says, <clears throat> He that smiteth a man so that he die shall be surely put to death. So here you see God meeting out the punishment for a man who committed a capital crime 
to take the life of another man. And it's serious in the sight of God. And because it is very serious that a man loses his life, therefore, God is there to ensure to ensure that there is just retribution for the man who committed such a crime. And you would also notice that this killing of a man is with direct reference to the sixth commandment. The sixth commandment uh, tells us thou shalt not kill in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 13. Now you notice here that when the Lord gives the command that we must not kill, he's, he's talking about murder. It's not talking about the retributive justice for someone who kills somebody. Uh, but here, there is a difference. And the word there that is used in the sixth commandment speaks of the man who kills someone with certain intention. Certain intention. But the word that is that, that is used there is not the word for uh, what we call execution. Execution. The meeting out of justice. A life for a life. And so, here, you see that God Himself requires that a man who takes another person's life has to pay it with his own life, teaching us the sacredness of human life. So, murder is a very serious crime that, that requires in the laws of God the death penalty. But here, we would notice that such a rule, such a law, is to be meted out with great care. Because if you kill someone, or if, if someone is going to be tried for murder, and he's found guilty, and the person is killed, is, uh, uh, pays for it with his own life, then you can't take back that life again, isn't it? If that person is innocent, then you realize that, ah, you may have done wrong to quickly decide. So, God's law provides for us also safeguards Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 17. Deuteronomy chapter 17 and verse 6 to 7. Here it says that at the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. But at the mouth of one witness he shall not be put to death. So, if there's one person that sees the person committing the crime and not a second person, then that person cannot be convicted. So these are safeguards that the Lord provides so as to protect the innocent from being put to death. That someone points a finger and said, hey, you, you have done wrong. But if that's not true, then 
that person who died and who is suffered to, to be punished, you can't take back the person's life, isn't it? It's too late. So God provides these safeguards so that there is a distinction that is made. And a person must be tried properly before a sentence is to be meted out. So when, uh, when the Lord gave the law in Deuteronomy 21 and verse 12, there are these qualifications. And verse 13 says, And if a man lie not in wit, but God deliver him into his hand, in other words, if he had not premeditated to kill, right? it was not his intention to kill, then God provide for him a way of escape. What was God's provision for this man's escape? Well, God's provision is this, that he has provided for them uh, six Levitical cities in Israel. And these Levitical uh, cities are uh, located in various places, various locations in the Promised Land, six on this side of Jordan, Six, uh, sorry, three on this side of Jordan and three on that side of Jordan. So that when a man uh, has no intention to kill, but uh, we said uh, the person nonetheless died, he can find justice by running to one of these cities of refuge. So one of the cases that was cited in the scriptures was a man holding an axe and he was chopping a tree and while he was chopping the tree the axe head flew out and hit another man and the man died so there was no intention in the sense that it was not premeditated he has not planned it of course there are situations when a man uh, killed for uh, with an uh, intention and that's given to us as an example in Psalm 10 right, you turn with me to Psalm 10 and verse 8 to 11 it says here he that sitteth in the lurking places of the villages in the secret places doth he murder the innocent his eyes are privily set against the poor. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den, and he lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him to his net. He couches and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. The Lord said in his heart, God hath forgotten and he said in his heart, God has forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. Well, God sees. That is why in verse 12 of Psalm 10, it says, Arise, O Lord, lift up thy hand, forget not the humble. God sees what the innocent man has uh, suffered and God will himself provide a fair verdict and so here our text tells us that there are scenarios when a man intentionally kill another man that's in verse 12 then he is, deserves after proper trial to be to pay for his crime because he has taken a life and a man's life is precious in the sight of God 
because man is made in the image of God, then that's, that's right and proper. But if a man did not lie in wait, verse 13 says, in other words, there was, it was not premeditated. There was not in his mind the intention to cause another person harm. Then, you see, in those days, the relatives of the victim has that uh, role of seeking revenge and ensuring that the person who did the crime pays for it. And so, the person who unintentionally uh, without premeditation kills someone, then he has a place to escape to. And this God provided uh, cities of refuge that, that God places so that the, the manslaughter may, may go and find refuge and have a proper trial in one of these places. And so here, the Lord provides the escape clause for one who uh, did not murder and one who did. Verse 14. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with gall and shall take him from mine altar that he may die. Thou shalt take him from my altar that he may die. And so if a man <clears throat> did kill and even though he may go to the house of God just as the general of David, the man called Joab did what did Joab do? Well, Joab went into the tabernacle and he went to the altar and he was holding on to the horns of the altar seeking for mercy but he killed the man during peace time he was culpable he killed the man called Abner and so when this happens he while well, his crime was being uh, uh, pointed out by Solomon, David's son, that was after David's decease, justice was meted out. That is what it means here in verse 14. To slay him with gall, thou shalt take him from my altar that he may die. He may go to the God's altar to find for himself right, uh, an escape but no author of God can uh, take away uh, the, the guilt and therefore here you would notice that the Lord provides for us equitable justice for the man who would live wantonly in society. He must be dealt with. And why does God give such laws and provide such cases because these are, as we can see, uh, actual happenings to the people around us. So how? What to do? What is the fair way? What is the just way? Uh, you would be able to see that God provides that for us here in this word. And verse 15 and verse 17 gives to us 
Another case, this is with relation to a man, a woman and his, his father and his mother. Verse 15 says, He that smiteth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. A man who, the word there, uh, describes what a man did to his father and mother. And here the word smite is a very serious word that describes a violent assault, a vicious assault amounting to an attempted murder. The person could have been killed as a result of this violence. So here, uh, the man or the woman uh, defies the authority of his father and, and mother. And it is in direct contradiction to the fifth commandment. The fifth commandment says, Honor thy father and thy mother. And so if someone dishonors his father and his mother and with the intention to cause harm upon them, then this law is given in order to protect the interest of the father and the mother. Right? Father and mother may become weak with old age and you have situations where we know with evil intention, right, children wanting the inheritance of father and mother. And sometimes perhaps they are in some kind of a debt themselves and bound and in desperate situation uh, would commit this uh, violence upon their own. Uh, but this text here tells us that such a one shall surely be put to death. The Lord sees this in a very serious way, in other words. God views such acts very seriously and it warrants the death penalty. And here, when we look at the case, we are not specifically uh, restricting to children not uh, inflicting violence upon their parents. But here, when children would refuse to care for their parents in their old age, are also culpable. This is what our Lord uh, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15, verse 3 to 6. If you would turn there, Matthew chapter 15, verse 3 to 6. Here it says, the word of the Lord, and he answered and said to them, why do ye, do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and thy mother, and he that curses father and mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father and mother, It is a gift, and whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honoreth not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your traditions. Ah, here you have a situation when the son or the daughter says, oh, this is for God. I'm giving this to God. Therefore, I cannot give this to you. Uh, the Lord here pointed out uh, that this is in violation of His law. This is a uh, hypocritical son or daughter right? he has that responsibility to 
take care of the parents. You must not say, I have other commitments, therefore I cannot take care of you. And so, as we think and consider this commandment that is given here, uh, the Lord wants us to be able to draw the principles so that we may understand and be able to see and weigh the gravity of situations. Right? So, uh, children who dishonor their parents, uh, God sees it very seriously. And God uh, meets out the highest the highest uh, punishment for those who make that violation. And further, as we go on, you would see uh, cases uh, uh, from here onwards, uh, verse 16, that gives to us uh, situations whereby a man inflicts uh, an injury on another person but not amounting to death okay. so a life is not lost but there are some damages then what do you do? what is just compensation? Uh, so here verse 17, our text says, And he that curses his father, and one that smiteth another with stone and with his feast, and he die not, but keepeth his bed, if he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, then shall he that smote him be quit. Only he shall pay for the loss of his time and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. And so here, you see the situation whereby a man causes uh, in a strife uh, another man to be hurt. Right? He hits a man uh, with, a, with a stone or with a feast, but the person did not die. And so that's not amounting to murder. And so if the person rise again, in other words, he was, after a, a period of time, he was able to uh, recover well, then what happens? Well, um, the person has to pay for the loss of time and shall cause him to be thoroughly healed. In other words, he has to pay for not only the medical expenses, uh, the person who is injured uh, by uh, perhaps uh, a violent reaction that causes harm, then there must be uh, due compensation for that person. And not only uh, if he's in a hospital or he's in his... Uh, he has to go to clinic for treatment. Right? Um, the person who caused that harm has a responsibility to pay for it. So if you are, if you are in this court, in this situation, then you ask yourself, what should I do? What is the just way for me to, to act in the sight of God? Uh, then God provides you uh, with uh, uh, the, 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 the case. What you should do? Right? You, you need to compensate the person not only for medically for what, uh, what the person has suffered but also here it speaks about his time loss right? where the person is not productive uh, verse 19 of our text only he shall pay for the loss of his time in other words during that period of time where he was nursing his injury He's unable to work, then you realize that uh, that's loss of time to him. So, 
an equitable compensation uh, would be that a person has to do this, right? ensure that they pay for the time uh, in which the person was not productive, otherwise he would have lost the income. Uh, that's the just way. So you see how God thinks? What is the just way by which we are to treat one another? What is the proper way? What is fair? Right? Sometimes we always, we are at a loss, we scratch our head. What is fair? What is equitable? So as you go to God's law, as you learn the principles, God will give us His mind so that we would have an idea of what is truly fair, what is truly right, so that we may not in our own mind uh, overdo or underdo a case, a situation. So God provides us this wisdom uh, so that we may uh, be duly uh, taught so that we may understand. And verse 20 uh, relates to the situation of a man and his servant. When he smites his servant, right, and if the servant dies, then he shall surely be punished. Notwithstanding, he continues a day or two, in, in other words, if he didn't die, then well, he shall not be punished. Why? Because the servant is still the responsibility of the master. Right? The master would have to pay to ensure that the person gets the proper treatment, medically speaking, so that he can be healed. And after the person is healed, then he can be productive for the master, isn't it? So the master is in the master's interest Right, to ensure that the worker is healed and he can be productive right, because in a sense they are uh, a part of his uh, possessions. Right, so you see here, as we study, you would be able to learn uh, how to think rightly. Right? Um, we oftentimes, if we are unguided, we don't know how to think. What is right? What is fair? What is just? Ah, that's where we need to go to God and His Word. And you would realize that the laws that undergird our society today are derived most of all from the Word of God. The principles are derived from there. Do you realize, you notice a lot of similarity to the practices that we see in our law today, why is it like that? Well, because it's from God's law, you see. And that is why it's so important that the people of God would, uh, would learn and know the good laws in which God has given to His people so that they may be able to uh, do that which is right in His sight. And we conclude with one other thought that is in verse 16. With regard to stealing, he that stealeth a man and selleth him. Ah, here we are talking about uh, a very serious crime of uh, not only uh, kidnapping for ransom, but here we are talking about uh, uh, selling of men and women. And this we see in the world around us, right? how, why kids suddenly disappear, and how they have been uh, kidnapped, caught, and sold off in the underground. Well, here the Lord uh, tells us that a man who does this right, deserves to be severely punished. If he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. 
So as we contemplate these laws, you would be able to find, as we uh, study them, right, the serious ones that has been put forward for us today, and then those which are not as serious, but nevertheless requires that uh, a just due compensation be made, then God's law also provides us the wisdom, you see, what we ought to do. So in that sense, when we study God's law, you would learn, we would learn our responsibility towards another person, isn't it? What we ought to do, what we ought not to do. And in this way, when we have learned the laws of God, and the laws of God is being taught to the people of God, then there would be order, there would be peace, there would be harmony in Israel's society, isn't it? And if the laws are not practiced, then you would see also that the society would uh, degenerate into anarchy, whereby there would be great chaos, violence that is taking place. So that is the reason why God gives His laws. He wants to raise a nation, two million people, a great number. How do they live peaceably one with another? What must we do? One, how do we treat one another? Well, God didn't leave us without understanding, but God shows us what is proper, what is right in His sight. And we thank God that He gives us His laws so that we may be taught, that we may be uh, wise unto salvation. May the Lord help us. Let us pray. Father, we thank Thee for Thy Word. Strengthen Thy people as we uh, review and meditate upon what Thou hast taught us. Uh, help us to not only have this hate knowledge, but rather help us to imbibe Thy law so that we may know how we may uh, meet out true justice in the course of our lives. For thy own honour and glory, help us. This I pray with thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.